In this Bioworks graphics design tutorial, you can learn how to create a vector chalkboard. And this is the finished product of what you'll be learning how to create. And this tutorial comes courtesy of a request that we got at the World of Webcraft forums where the user asks, Hello all, I'm making a chalkboard application using the canvas tag where somebody can draw on the canvas like it is a chalkboard. What I'm wondering is how I would create the graphics for the chalkboard, not the actual code. Could anybody point me in the right direction for graphics? I'm looking for something that would border the chalkboard like wood or something, and then a little tray where the chalk would go like in real life. I would like the graphics to look similar to this. Can anybody point me in the right direction? So I told the user that I could show him how to do that using Fireworks. And he said, that would be nice, thanks. Create a new Fireworks document. And I'm going to make mine 1400 wide and 550 high. You can make yours any size you need it to fit into your monitor OK. And I'll change my canvas to white. And the first thing I'm going to do is import my Blackboard graphics that I have here. Now this is just a photo of an actual blackboard at a school. And I think that's the easiest way to attain an authentic looking erased chalk effect. But if you want, you can just draw out a black rectangle, put a few shapes on it, blur those shapes, give them the blur filter, and then also lower their opacity, and then scatter them around on the blackboard and you'll have that erased chalk look effect. But I think it's easier just to get an actual photo of a blackboard or a green board, whatever color you're using. But I'm going to use a blackboard and turn it green. So let's go to, make sure you have it highlighted, click on the filter plus sign there. I'm going to go to adjust color, hue and saturation. So I'm going to attempt to make it green. So let's see what we have to do to get it green. Bring the saturation up a little bit and then we can just move the hue bar until we get the color green we want. And you can lighten it up a little bit. That looks about right to me. So press OK. Then there you have your green board. Or you can just leave it black if you want a blackboard. OK, I'm going to grab this. See what kind of dimensions we have. 672 by 412. All even numbers. I like that. So I'm going to grab it and put it in the middle of the screen. Right there. Now I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. And I'm going to draw myself a 16 pixel wide rectangle here. And it can be a little bit higher than the board if you want. And I'm going to change the color to a nice brown right about here lighten it up a bit maybe come up here something like that alright so I'm just gonna grab it and put it right up against that right there and I'll press control C control V to make another one just like that and slap it up against the side over here and then make it match to where the Y position at 64 matches the Y position for this one at 64 then I can simply take one of these again, control C, control V, and then rotate it 90 degrees. And I'll put that on top here, like that. And then I'll just hit the scale tool with it still selected and scale it till it meets up with that other one. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then I'll highlight that rectangle, control C, control V, drag the copy down to the very bottom until I have something that looks like that. Now I'm going to highlight all four of those by holding shift as I go around and select them. So you can see I have four objects here highlighted. I'm going to go to Modify, Combine Paths, and Union. And there's my nice little frame all set up. And we're going to add some effects to that still. I'm going to highlight my green bitmap chalkboard. And I'm going to make it fit in there snug. Right about there. And right about there. So I'm just resizing it to where it fits in there a little bit more snug. It doesn't have to be perfect. As long as none of it shows through, you don't see any white lines, you don't see any of the white background in between the green board and your frame. So I'm going to highlight the green board and I'm going to give it another filter effect of inner glow. And it'll have a black inner glow. And we'll make it about 7. And let's blur it out a little bit more. Actually, 7 is too much. Let's go back to 4. Blur it out to about 10. And then you can bring your opacity down, up or down as you see fit. Now let's highlight the frame and let's go ahead and give that a brown edge and zoom in holding control and then mouse wheel so you can zoom in on things and then what we're going to do is start in this top corner and we're just going to put in a little line right there a 45 degree line from here to there and you just want to make sure it has that brown color now you can just take that press control C control V 
and then flip it vertically and then just drag it down to the bottom either using your mouse just to grab it and move it or you can do like I'm doing here and just hit your down arrow key and you'll see it sliding down this way you'll know it'd be in the perfect pixel location it takes it a little longer or you can just grab the stupid thing and put it there you just want to make sure it's in the right spot looks like it's a little too long so I'm gonna take this and move this dot right there we'll do the same to the one on top right there okay that's piping now you can highlight this one let's go back to our regular pointer tool highlight this one and this one so you have those two little lines control C control V and then flip them horizontally and then you can just slide those to the other side those will take forever so you just want to grab those and put them close enough zoom in make sure you're in the right spot with those it looks about right to me yeah, that's good enough now you can highlight your frame and play with some textures down here I have the metal texture selected so you can see if I bring it up to about 50 percent see what that does so I might bring it to maybe 14 something like that maybe even a little less you can put any texture that you want on there there's even a wood texture down at the bottom right there yeah so we'll just leave it wood let's take this and that inner glow I'm gonna darken it just a little more make sure it shows through a little more now let's take all of that just highlight everything it's your arrow key just move it up just a little bit so you got room to play on the bottom here because we're not going to be putting anything else on top above that now let's highlight our frame just to be sure that the next rectangle that we pull out will have that same color and we're going to draw it in right at the bottom here and then we're going to go to our skew tool with it still selected and we're going to hold shift and skew this edge outward and that'll give us a little 3D perspective on our little tray that will be sitting there. Then we're going to draw one more rectangle right underneath that one. And it's not going to be very high. Right about like that. And this one I'm going to make just a little bit darker. And then this one on top. Let's go ahead and highlight both of those. And hit your arrow key up once. It'll meet those edges up a little bit better. You can even put this up here if you like. Right there to cover those uh, edges down there. But for now we'll just put it right there. Now I'm going to highlight this one. And I'm going to change the wood texture to a line horizontal. Maybe this one. And then I'm going to bring it all the way up. And what that will do is it will give me something that looks like a little tray and it's a little too high so I'm gonna highlight this one and this one and scale them together just bring them up a little bit right about there actually I'm gonna highlight these two again and bring them up just a little bit more scale them and this one its height let's make that about eight now it looks like we have a 3d perspective of a little tray that holds that's designed to hold chalk and the little erasers Okay, let's highlight this frame once again, and let's give this an inner glow. It'll be black 4, let's bring the 4 down to 2, let's bring that 2 for the blur down to 2. I'm sorry, bring the 4 down to a 2 on the blur, and then you can play around with the opacity setting for that to get just the right look you want. And what that does is just gives a little more depth and realism to the frame. Let's see what it looks like at 50%. That's even a little bit too much. Let's blur it out to 3 and bring it down to about right about there. Now these two, you can group those together. Control G. That way, when you highlight them, they move together. Like I said, you can move them up to be sitting right there if you want. And I'm going to change the height on this because I don't like the angle on it too much. Actually, I'm going to make them ungrouped by Control Shift G. We'll ungroup those two, and then I could just maybe move this one up a little. No, I don't want to do that. I want to make this one less high. So maybe just make that 10, and then bring this one up to match it. Right there. Something like that. Now that gives us a better perspective, 3D perspective, to where we can put an eraser and a piece of chalk on there now. Creating your chalk is simple. You can just grab a little rectangle, draw it out, make it the size you want it, Make sure it has no edge, and we can just have a gradient of linear. We'll make it white on top, 
and a darker gray kind of color on the bottom. Something like that. And then you can round that rectangle to where its edges aren't so sharp. But that would be a full new piece of chalk there. But if you wanted something with the edges a little rounded, you could do that. So you can see what that looks like with rounded edges. So you just drag that down into place where you want it. Let's put it right about there. And you can put a couple of more. Control C, Control V, move them around, put them anywhere you want them in there. And if you want, you can even drop a little shadow on those. Drop shadow. Let's make the angle go up. Only about maybe two, two or three on the length. Now for the eraser, I'm just going to grab a rectangle, draw it into the board right about there. I'm going to make it really dark, so I'll leave it with the linear like that, but on top, about like that, and then on the bottom, actually on the top, I want it darker, like that. You can see it still has that wood texture on it. If we zoom in, you can notice there's a little bit of noise on it because of that wood texture, and that's good. Now I'm going to round the edges on that because I don't want them so sharp. Maybe 32, something like that. And we'll zoom in on that, press Control C, Control V, where you have a copy of that one. And you're going to adjust the height. And you can even make it just a little bit bigger than the one under it. And then change the colors to the wood kind of color. Maybe something really dark on this edge. Then you can highlight this little gray piece again. And let's give that an inner shadow of white. Change the angle to where it's coming directly on the side there. Change that to about four. Then we'll do the same thing to the other side. So while it's still selected, go to Shadow, Inner Shadow, make it white, and then turn the angle to where it's coming from the other direction. Turn that to about four. Okay. And then one more. Inner Shadow. And this one you're going to leave it black. Make it come up about three. Change the angle to where it's coming up from the bottom. And you can even darken that. Just like that. Actually the bottom's a little dark, so I'll lighten that up a little. Maybe sixty. Right about there. You can make this one just a little bit high up. Maybe make that seven. There we go. And you can make this top piece any color you want. Now finally let's zoom in and highlight those two items. Control G will group them together. Go back to a hundred percent. Go to Filter, Drop Shadow, and we're going to drop this shadow up like we did for the chalk. Degrees to be 90 for the angle. Then let's bring this down to about 4. Let's blur that out a little more. Right about there. Actually, let's bring that down to about 2. See what that looks like. That's not too bad. Now let's bring the opacity down. There, that looks okay. Now you can just press Control A to highlight everything, press Control G to group everything, and then now you have everything in a nice group. And then when you want to render it out, you can just fit canvas to it, and then you go to File, Export Wizard, and then you just use your Export Wizard there to make it a JPEG, GIF, PNG, or any kind of file that you want to export it as for the web. Okay, so that's how you make custom blackboard or greenboard chalkboard graphics from scratch using Adobe Fireworks. We hope you found this exercise useful and we'll see you in the next lesson.